Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's moneymaker, I thought we'd go ahead and do the Hydra, since earlier today I did feel like doing some Slayer and I actually had this as my task. Believe it or not, this was actually the same task that I had before I was even maxed on the account. I ended up getting 99 Slayer on this Hydra task. So it has been quite some time since I've done the Alchemical Hydra, but hopefully we're not too rusty. Now there are quite a few requirements to do this boss, namely 95 Slayer being the highest requirement I think, but just make sure you read over the wiki page so that you can see what you need to have done before you attempt this boss. Also, just like the last video, the GP per hour that is shown here is heavily reliant on the drops that you get from Hydra being the unique drops, so the Hydra Claw is going to have a pretty big impact on that, which means that for a future video I will definitely try a loot from 1000 Alchemical Hydra, that way we can get a more accurate price per hour. But in order to do that I'm gonna need a lot of Slayer points to be skipping tasks constantly, so I'll make sure that I get on that grind ASAP. Now as for the gear setup, I am using what the wiki recommended, and they actually recommend to bring a lot of prayer boosting gear, so there you saw me buying the Ring of the Gods and then I went to NMZ to imbue it, and man is this thing expensive. I don't remember it ever being 20 mil, I think the last time that I checked the price on this it was under 10 mil, so that's pretty crazy. I might go do some Vedion after this to try my luck at getting that. And here you can see the rest of the gear setup. I will be using the Tebow since it is best in slot here at the Alchemical Hydra. And here is a screenshot from over a year ago of the first setup that I used at the Alchemical Hydra. There are some minor differences here, mainly the prayer boosting gear. Instead of the Archer's Ring, I am bringing the Ring of the Gods. Instead of the Pagasian Boots, I am bringing the Devout Boots. And instead of the Ava's Assembler, I am bringing my Max Cape, which has all of the effects of all the other skill capes. Now, the reasoning behind this was because apparently accuracy bonus isn't too important at Hydra since the defenses aren't that high, and prayer boosting gear will ultimately lead to longer trips since you're really relying on prayer for most of the fight. You actually don't even need food as long as you get all of your prayers right. But seeing as how it had been a while since I had done Hydra, I thought I'd bring a couple pieces of Shark. And in my inventory you can clearly see that I'm bringing the Construction Cape, and that was before I thought about bringing the Max Cape, so don't worry, I got rid of that whenever I went to go and do the 1 hour. As for getting there, we are using the Rada's Blessing 4 to teleport to this area. We can take down this lift to the bottom floor, the dungeon, and then we do have the shortcut unlocked so we can go through this tunnel. And it does take about 20 seconds to get through it, but I cut that out because it's just a black screen for most of it, so yeah. Once you're through it, you can just head north a little bit. There's this guy right here you can claim your stuff back from if you do die. And here is the boss room. Now, when I first started it, I totally forgot to turn on the timer. So the first kill that I did was kind of a test run. I got my bearings a little bit and I remembered how to kill the Hydra fairly easily. One thing that I want to say is very important is having the Elite, Karend, and Kebos Diary done. This allows you to walk around the dungeon without having to wear the Boots of Stone or the Boots of Brimstone. Normally, if you don't have the Diary done, you actually take damage if you don't wear the proper boots. But once you have the Elite Diary done, you can wear any boots that you want. Which in our case was the Pagasian boots initially, but then we switched to the Devout boots for more prayer. Now one thing that I brought with me was the Bone Crusher Necklace, which is a combination of the Dragon Bone Necklace and the Bone Crusher, and the Hydra Tail. And the reason why I brought that was just for the extra prayer points. If you wear the necklace, I believe it's 8 seconds before killing the boss, you'll get the prayer restoration effect from the bones that it drops. And since it drops double bones, you get about 8 prayer points with each kill. Now the wiki didn't mention this in the gear setup, because I'm assuming that Ultimately, you get faster kills if you just wear the anguish throughout the entirety of it, but I decided to save a little bit on the prayer pots. Just remember to switch back to the anguish after you get the kill, because for one of the kills I did a full kill with the bone pressure necklace on. I totally forgot to switch to the anguish, so yeah. 
Now as you saw already we got pretty lucky early on. We did get the Hydra Fang which doesn't really have a value on its own but when you add that with the Hydra Eye and the Hydra Heart you can make the Brimstone Ring which is actually worth a pretty decent amount. I believe right now it's worth around 4 mil so not bad at all. All we're missing now is just the heart and then we can complete the ring. And more than likely I probably won't sell it, I'll probably just keep it because whenever you get a drop in your name or you make something by yourself it just it feels that much more special. As for drops that I've already gotten here, I have not gotten lucky with the Hydra Claw but I cannot complain because I did get the Hydra Pet pretty early on and I gotta say it's my favorite pet by far. I mean. Vorky is my favorite pet just because of how long the grind took, but if we're talking looks, I think the Hydra looks the best. Especially because you can change between the different forms of the Hydra. Now when I first started recording this video, I fully expected to do this one hour in two separate trips, but as you see, I have been getting pretty lucky with supply drops, those being the super restores, the ranging potions, and the sharks on the ground. Now since I was getting a lot of those, I managed to actually stay here for the full hour and that was without prey flicking. If you feel like being fully efficient and prey flicking throughout the entirety of the fight, you could probably stay here for a very very long time. Like I said before, you really don't need food since the only damage that you take from this boss is the first attack because you can't really anticipate whether it's going to be range or mage. But the damage you take from that you can heal up with the blowpipe so yeah if you're a professional counter meaning that you can count up to three and you don't mess up your prayers you can pretty much stay here for i'd say a full day if you really really wanted to or actually no you would get six hour logs so maybe just six hours now luckily runelight actually remembered the tile markers that i had set down whenever i had first killed this boss way back when it was released so it really wasn't too hard to remember how to kill this boss, it was kind of like riding a bike. Once you do it so many times you just never forget. This boss will always hold a special place in my heart because soon after losing 3 bill at the dueling arena and being almost completely cleaned, I was pretty demotivated but I came to do Hydra in hopes of getting a big drop or possibly the pet and I got just that. So getting the pet this early on kind of inspired me and motivated me to keep playing the game even though I had lost almost all of my bank. Well, yeah, most of it. As you can see there in the screenshot, I only had the armadillo top and not enough for the legs. That is me wearing black dehyde chaps, so yeah. And with that being said, we are approaching the end of the one hour and as you can see on the floor, there's just so many sharks there. I barely ate any. I think when I looked in the supply tracker I had eaten about five in the entirety of the trip and I think like the last two or three I just ate because I had so many. So definitely not a bad trip back after so many months of being away. And here's a little price check of all the loot that we got, all the runes, herbs, bones, all of the money we got from alking all the stuff, totals to around 2.1 mil so not bad. And we also got the Hydra Fang so that's nice too. Not quite close to what the wiki was estimating, but again, you gotta remember that it heavily relies on the Hydra Claw. I believe the Hydra Claw makes up around 1.5 mil of that hour. So if we were to add that 1.5 mil to the amount that we got, we'd be closer to what the wiki estimates. Now I'm just at the GE selling off all of the loot. I'm not putting it in for too crazy of a price, I'm lowering it down to the OS Buddy actively traded price, but if you do choose to do these money makers, I highly recommend leaving them in there for a little bit higher, that way you can maximize your total profit. But for the sake of the video, I just tried selling off everything as quickly as I could. And with the last of the runes being sold, we have a total price check of 2,130,539 GP, along with the Hydra Fang. Here's also a small look at what my collection log is looking like for Alchemical Hydra. As you can see, the only items that we're missing is the Hydra Claw, the Hydra's Heart, and the Jar. I guess you could also put the throwing knives in there as well, but I believe you can also get those from another monster that are not, it's not just unique to Hydra, so yeah. But with all of that being said, we can now do the calculation. If we subtract the supplies that we used in this video, which was 148,626 GP, from the total amount of money that we made which was 2,130,539 GP 
we get a grand total profit of 1,981,913 GP. Not a bad amount for one hour at the Hydra. And here's just a picture of what the wiki estimates that you can get. As you can see, it's close to 3.7, but if you see on the right side, the Hydra's Claw is worth around 1.6 mil of that 3.7, so yeah. Might have to do a bigger video in the future so we can get a more accurate profit per hour. Also, here's a look at what the XP that we got from this one hour looks like. A pretty decent amount of range XP. Honestly, it's actually a lot more than what I thought it was going to be. And a nice amount of Slayer XP as well. And here is also a picture of the loot that we got. We managed to get 25 kills in this one hour, so not bad at all. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you did enjoy it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode.